and to bring my needs and my desires and my cares and my worries and my troubles to you this morning, Lord. Allow me to bring that to you and to put that at your feet, but not just put that at your feet, Lord, to believe and to trust you and to seek you and to come to you praying several times a day, two, three, four, five times a day, bringing this to you, Lord, and not in repetition, but just being a a man or a woman in a fervent prayer to the Lord because the Bible says that a person who is a fervent prayer in the Lord, a fervent prayer reaches the ears of the Lord when you come to Him with your heart and spirit and in truth. A fervent prayer is a good prayer. That's telling the Lord, I seek you and I believe in you and you can only help me. You're the only one that can come in and save me and this problem, this issue that I'm having, you can overcome it because you are an overcomer and I'm an overcomer in you. And yes, if something was bad to happen to me and you didn't heal me, that means that I will be healed when I stand in front of you. So I receive healing one way or the other. Here, naturally on earth, or when I come to be with the Father, I will receive. What does it say? When He comes, He's going to give us a new body. But before that, our body goes to the ground and our spirit and our soul go with the Father. So when we die, our last breath, our spirit and our soul go with the Father. Your body goes to the ground and then the Lord's going to come and He's going to get all His children from the ground raised up and those that are still alive are going to meet Him in the air and then we're going to go home with the Father on that beautiful and glorious day. Amen and amen to that, Lord. So we thank You, Lord. We thank you for that. So right here, then those who were in the boat came and worshiped him saying, truly you are the son of God. Because remember, the disciples were in the boat. They had just come from feeding the 5,000. And the disciples were in the boat and right in the middle of getting to the other side, I believe they were going to Bathsheba, Capernaum. And as they were halfway there, he seen that they were struggling, the wind was contrary to them, and they were in a storm. They were physically in a storm. Now, listen to this. The disciples were obedient to the Father. He told them to get into the boat, the Lord Jesus Christ, and he said, I want you to go to the other side, and I believe the other side was Bathsheba. Uh, it'll tell us in Mark. As they were going to the other side, they ran into a storm, a physical storm in the sea, and the storm was tossing them to and fro. It was mysterious that it was a bad storm. There was wind blowing, waves over, over coming water into the boat. So it was a bad storm and they were panicking and they didn't know what to do. And then out of nowhere, here comes the Lord Jesus because he sees everything. He sees you in the middle of your storm and he comes to you in the middle of the storm. And he speaks to you in the middle of the storm, but you have to be silent and you have to be having a relationship with him because what does it say? My sheep know my voice. So when we hear him speak to us, we know what he's saying. Now, is it going to be an audible lie? No, I need you to, to go to the left, to the right. No, he may speak to you audibly, but he's going to speak to you through his word. The Lord Jesus Christ will speak to your heart. And he will show you and tell you of things to come because that's who he is and that's what the Holy Spirit does. So when you're in a storm, you think you're by yourself. And you can be by yourself if you don't have a relationship with the Father. Just because you have a relationship with the Father, you still have storms. Once again, the 12 disciples were in the boat. They were obedient. They got in and uh, were obedient to Jesus. He told them to go to the other side. They went to the other side. They just witnessed a great miracle of him feeding the 5,000 men. That's not counting women and children. So the Lord, they seen all this and they have faith and they believe in him and then they get in a storm. So just because you're a believer in Christ, just because you're a saint, just because you are a child of the Most High God does not mean that you will be exempt from storms. If anything, you may get more storms and let me say even worse storms, rougher storms, because if you're a non-believer, you already belong to Satan. He's got you. 
But if you're a believer, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that they may have life and have life with more abundance. So the thief only has one mission, and that is to kill, steal, and destroy. And he wants to destroy you, destroy your family, to kill you and your family because he hates you with a vengeance. And you think that because nothing ha bad happens to you, everything good, it's because you're his son and he doesn't want to put problem into you. Because what happens when you have problem issues and these chronic diseases and these family issues and money issues and trouble, you run to God and you start asking him to help you and praying to him. And that's the last thing Satan wants because the Father hears you. If you are a child of God, he hears you and he sees you and he knows that you're in a storm. So call out to him, be faithful to him, be true to him, only seek him and he will come and he will call you to him. And when he calls you to him, you get out of that storm, out of that boat. And you may be sinking like Peter because of your faith. And he will call you and he will pull you from that storm. And that's who the Lord Jesus Christ is. And that is why we serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Just know that you're in a storm today. There is hell breaking loose. Look, in the country today, the Bible speaks about the end times. I'm not trying to scare you, but I've seen videos that Amazon is putting chips in their people in the right hand and they're using them to buy food and all this. The Bible tells us you will not be able to buy, sell, or trade without the mark of the beast. And they're putting that little bitty pin in you and you're doing it. And I'm sure those pins have numbers. And I'm sure there's three sixes in that pin somewhere. So you have to understand, think about it. They have to number them little pins. You got millions of people. And then there's another thing that I hear that they're paying people $2,000 a month to put that pen in them. And you guys are gonna do that because they're paying you to do that. You are so foolish, you'll do anything for money and you don't care. But if you knew what the word of God says, we are talking about one currency, making digital money so that they can do, the Bible tells you all of these things. How does the Bible that was written all these hundreds of years ago tell you exactly what is gonna happen today only the Lord Jesus Christ can do that and you don't know what's going on and you fail we had the government come on TV and tell us that they found extraterrestrial bodies shipwrecks they have ship from the shipwrecks and they have bodies from the the shipwreck as well now the government since I was a little kid in Roswell 50 or whatever they've always denied it now they are showing you they showed us a while back that there was flying saucers and they have military men speaking saying yeah we seen this we seen that then we shot down UFOs over such and such and then we got shot down balloons they are showing you why are they showing you this stuff because they are smart but you know what they cannot smart our Lord our Father when he comes for his people, they have to explain to you. But remember, the Bible says that we'll be caught up. You know what they're failing to miss? The Lord knows everything. When, when we get caught up and the dead rise and the, the alive go with him, I believe the whole world is going to see that. And you can say all the flying saucers took us and all that that you want to, but that is a lie. But they have to come up with these things because they have to tell you the people. And you the people are hard-headed. You the people don't believe, and you the people don't believe in the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, God, and you also don't even believe in Satan. You believe that you die and you go back to the dirt. That's what you believe, and you have been lied to, and you have been fooled to. So this morning, know that you're in a storm, but know that although I'm in this storm, whatever it may be, health, financial, work issues, family issues, marriage issues. We know that if we are to give this problem to the Father, say you have a marriage problem and you and your wife are on, on divorce, talking divorce. And y'all hate each other. You don't hate each other, but you no longer have love and a passion for each other as you once did. 
But if something was to happen to her or him, you would, that's your spouse, that's your partner. It's just because you have fell out of love because of everything that the world shows you and what the world tells you and Satan is whispering things in your ear. Now, come to God and say, Father, I need you in my relationship. We are talking about divorce and, and I don't even love this man. I don't love this woman anymore. And I need your help, Lord. I did love her. I did love him. I wouldn't have married them. And now I'm out of love. It's only out of love because that's what Satan tells you and that's what Satan has put in your head. You bring that to the Lord and ask the Lord to show you, to show you the love that you have for this person. Just bring your things to the Lord. What I'm trying to say, marriage is so important. And today, marriage is a joke. I will marry another one. I'll get it right next time. Next time I'm marrying for money. Next time I'm marrying for sex. Next time I'm marrying for this and that and this and that. It's all a lie. Everything is a lie. God made marriage between man and woman. And when you marry a woman or man, you're, you're dedicated to that person. You love that person. You want to spend eternity. Well, that eternity. You want to spend your rest of your life with that person. In Jesus' name, that's what we pray. So, Lord, we bring all our cares and our troubles to you, and we ask you to just help your people this morning, Lord, and that you will bring light to the darkness in everyone's situation that we have. So, thank you for allowing Fishers of Men 316 to come minister and know that you are in a battle, you are in a storm, and know that he will call you to him in that storm, and know that he will bring healing, deliverance, salvation, baptism of the Holy Spirit to your situation so that you can walk in the power and authority for the kingdom, for the Father, for the Son, allowing the Holy Spirit to do the work. So shake off this storm. Know that that is Jesus walking on the water. Know that he gets into the boat and all the mysterious winds, everything comes to the seas. Who is this man? Who is this man that even the winds and the waves obey? Thank you, Fishers of Men 316, and we love you guys. Amen and amen to that, Lord.